In today's fast-paced financial environment, instant payments have become a hot topic. The growth of e-commerce has caused changes in consumer spending patterns and a shift in user expectations. So what is the current state of play of instant payment schemes rolling out in Europe and around the world? For some insight, we're joined by Christoph Hoffmann, Global Head of Payments and Collection Products at Deutsche Bank AG. Welcome to Cybos TV, Christoph. Um, Thank you very much. We'll start off with the changes that are going on in the industry at the moment. Yeah. So clearly, I think the industry, the payments industry, is seeing an unprecedented amount of change. If you look at the transformation of ISO 2022, all the market infrastructure is moving. If you think about what's happening with open banking, banks, opening up the infrastructure and allowing third-party providers to access the accounts or initiate payments, um, but as well in the context of instant payments, as you mentioned, as a third big theme where you can really say, yes, it existed before, but now it's really being rolled out at scale and you see, you see completely new collection methods emerging. And that clearly, as well in the context with new players entering the market, so it's a very exciting time to be in payments. I'm glad you mentioned instant payments, that little phrase, because we talk about it a lot, but how new is the concept? Is it really that new? I would say it's not a really new concept. If you think around the UK, it's been around for 10 years. Um, as well, other countries like Japan have seen instant payment schemes. Um, so it's not new, but the additional features which are being deployed now with new technology, a, uh, for example, APIs, it becomes much more usable at different points, like the point of sale at the, uh, at in e-commerce or m-commerce, and it's as well around the globe while we had a few hand-picked instant payment systems in the past now it's really 50 plus countries where instant payment systems are live and it's being deployed everywhere so it's a big big trend <laughs> so where are we seeing it at the moment talk us through the current rollout in Europe and around the world let's maybe start around the world and it's not only the current rollout but where it is already and it's evolving so if you look, for example, let's start with India, where you have UPI, which is actually the second instant payment system being rolled out in India after IMPS. And I would say it's the most advanced instant payment system in the world with lots of built-in features like request to pay, um, like proxy ID, paying to a proxy ID, etc. But then you see it as well in countries like in Malaysia, it's available, um, it's being rolled out really around the world and it's a big, big trend, partially driven by regulatory demand, for example, Hungary and Russia, that's really a regulatory project. You have to implement it as a bank. And then in other countries, just as a necessity to compete in the market with new payment schemes, etc. Mm -hmm. Talking about Europe, we are live with SIPA instant payments um, already for two years now. Um, and you see really it ramping up the use, more, ba more and more banks really um, implementing it, and therefore the reach expanding. So I think we have a really good momentum there. Mm. But look, when you look at the overall picture of, of adoption, clearly some countries have got a far more evolved system than others. So what are the challenges to this adoption? Because you can talk about it, but it doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. So first of all, clearly, it takes a bit of time for all market participants to implement it. Um, challenges of the adoption is, um, you need to make it really useful at the point where the consumer needs to use it, right? At the point of sale in e-commerce, m-commerce. Um, so that means it's not sufficient to just put the rails in place, but you need to have the right payment initiation mechanisms, being it via API, being it via different solutions to really make that available. Um, and then you have a bit of homework as well on the market infrastructure side. So if you think about Europe, um, they are, you have a very good system, but there is still several countries still have their domestic basically clearing being established, mm. which means the interoperability is not yet fully resolved. And while you can do domestic instant payments in many of those countries and where you have tips and EBA, EBA clearing as cross-European um, clearing systems, the interoperability between all those mm. systems to get the full reach still so is it a topic. Is to it be slows it down effectively, doesn't it? I wouldn't say it slows it down, but it's, it's, it, it's, it's, it doesn't allow for the full reach sometimes. But if you look at Germany, so in Germany, um, we have a quite good reach already. We are now at roughly 70% of the existing uh, traffic can be reached by instant, and we expect that to go up. So by end of the year, we are for sure at 85 90%, and then it starts being really relevant. Mm. 
challenges aside, the crux of the matter is always going to be how it helps businesses, really. Well, via numerous points, it can help businesses. So there is clearly, if you think about, let me maybe one step back. So there is clearly adoption is happening often first in the person-to-person -person space and then in the business-to-consumer space. So e-commerce, merchant payments, etc. On the business-to-business -business side, the adoption is a bit slower. Um, if you think about the business-to-consumer side, there's, for example, nearly a race between e-commerce companies uh, who has the fastest payout mm. for refunds. Because the faster you get the money back to your client, the more happier the client is, the better the user experience, and the faster the client spends again the money on new products. So that is a bit, very often, it is tied to the concrete user experience to really make it beneficial. But there's well other examples. If you think about open banking-based solutions, it as will be used for collection methods. So we, for example, as Deutsche Bank, have implemented um, our own Deutsche Bank request to pay based on open banking, which is then using open banking and instant payments in combination to allow uh, corporates to collect much faster. And that means as well saving cost for the collection versus credit card fees, which can be much more expensive. Mm. And in terms of the standards, how will these help in the rollout of these payment infrastructures globally? So the standards are super important. We are not living in a local world anymore, but in a global economy. And more and more, even, even e-commerce business is happening cross-border, right? So being able to have common standards to transport the right information within the payment first helps adoption because there's a quicker, it's easier for banks to implement it, it's easier for other market participants to implement it, but it helps as well on the interoperability which I mentioned before. It's becoming more straightforward if you have the same standards, for example ISO 20 or 22, yes. both in the classical cross-border traffic and the SWIFT traffic, but as well in the instant payment schemes. Could you tell us more about the recent press release by SWIFT in this area? So that's where cross-border payments hits instant, and I think it's a fascinating field. So um, there was a proof of concept being done between the European Central Bank, SWIFT, and a couple of banks um, to really, as well in Europe, prove that you can have a cross-border transaction, let's say originating from China, and being uh, paid out in Europe via an instant payments infrastructure. So that means really two things as benefits. First, it makes a cross-border payment in seconds then. Mm. And secondly, it releases you from the constraints of so-called cutoff time. So markets not being open. You can really 24-7 receive money. And that was very successful. So it has been achieved. Um, we as Deutsche Bank participated as creditor, as intermediary and as debtor across the three roles. <laughs> three, all three roles, and actually we had our entities in the Americas, in Germany, and in Asia participate. So we did three roles, three continents, and the results are very promising. There is clearly some work to be done on the industry to agree on how to put this into real life, into production. So it was an innovative proof of concept at the moment, but I think there's a lot of commitment by all players to make that happen over time. Um, the key requirement here is to, to allow this for the schemes to transport to the standards point all the information required to make that fully compliant and really make it a scalable solution. Mm, it's a fascinating journey and we wish you well as you embark on that road. But Christoph Hoffmann, Global Head of Payments and Collection Products at Deutsche Bank, thank you so much for joining us on Cybos TV and have a great Cybos week. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank it was you. a pleasure. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Thank you.